We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Godspeed, John Glenn. Our planet is a lonely speck in the great enveloping cosmic dark. In our obscurity, in all this vastness, there is no hint that help will come from elsewhere to save us from ourselves. The Earth, a planet that is over 4.5 billion years old. Our home. And since the invention of electricity over 140 years ago, that population has expanded to over 7.8 billion. We have turned those dark, scary nights into day. The Earth, though, has faced many challenges over the course of its own life, but nothing like it faces today. Mankind has presented new obstacles for it to overcome. Mankind's fingerprint is found in almost every spot on the Earth, with great accomplishments and also terrible mistakes as well. The Earth is having trouble recovering from these choices man has made. This series will show the natural world on our home, seen in the sun as a pale blue dot. Our planet is a lonely speck in the great enveloping cosmic dark. The Earth is the only world known so far to harbor life. There is nowhere else, at least in the near future, to which our species can migrate. Visit? Yes. Settle? Not yet. Like it or not, for the moment, the Earth is where we make our stand. In this short documentary series, the goal is to explore North America's United States, a continent with a large array of diverse ecosystems as each area makes up unique species of wildlife and environment found nowhere else in the world. The aim is to explore what makes the United States so different, hoping to show a true life moment in everyday wildlife. How have the animals coped with the industrial age, the expansion of human development, with the human boom? There is now 328 million people in climbing, how has wildlife adapted to this new way of life? How have they managed to handle habitat loss from human development? But more importantly, how can we help maintain and preserve these places and species for generations to come? What part can you do? Through each episode, it is my hope to, if I can, answer these questions. We shall start our journey across America in the northeast corner, New England as it's known. It's famous for its historical cities that have reached back as one of the oldest settled places in America. In the state of Maine, there's beautiful mountains and lakes. Next door is New Hampshire whose famous covered bridges cover the state. Coastal towns hard at work hauling in seafood, mainly their famous red lobsters, which are exported all over the country. In Massachusetts, however, there's beautiful clear beaches which have been in movies like Jaws, and of course, famous for its lighthouses, a beacon for when the storms are raging. It's winter here in Massachusetts, and the high northern winds have come drawing down from the Arctic. They push and bash the waves into the shore, the wind howling across the sand. Not much life is usually seen in winter, though for some, the cold isn't bothersome. It's just another challenge of surviving. But harbor seals, they're well suited for this challenge. 
well suited for the cold. Their thick blubber protects them in the winter time. Here in the Merrimack River, only some have chosen to stay. Others will have ventured elsewhere. The days here in New England are very short during the winter, and the Merrimack River will continue its push out to the Atlantic. It'll empty. And the Atlantic, driven by the winds, will continue its push against the shore, forcing its way back in. This is the cycle, till the days get longer. And for the seals who have chosen to stay in this spot for the winter, they must enjoy this space while it lasts. For soon, within the blink of an eye, spring has arrived. And with it, it has drawn in newcomers. were thought to reduce fish populations, so fishermen viewed them as nothing but competition. Thankfully, due to heavy conservation efforts, they were saved before it was too late. It doesn't take long for the river to empty out and settle down. It gives the seal space to spread out onto the newly exposed rock. Harbor seals are a bit lazy. They like to sleep and play.
Harbor seals used to use the beach to relax and sunbathe. But it's not very relaxing constantly being disturbed by dogs. Owners often let their dogs run free at the beach. And dogs running up to the harbor seals, harassing them, driving them into the water. So for these seals, it's better to stay out onto the rocks and not have to worry much. Besides their neighbors, brand geese, who feed on the newly exposed rocks. Eventually, the river will stop flowing out to the Atlantic and the tide will slowly return to reclaim that which it exposed. The colony that was spread out will now have to start getting closer and tighter together. The tide rises relentlessly. There's no way to fight it. It reclaims back whatever it wants to take. One goes and like a chain reaction they all go, forcing them off of their spots and into the river. There isn't a predator nearby, but the tide, and its ever relentless crusade to reclaim back the rocks it exposed. For the seals that were in the river, they climb up onto the last bit of remaining open rock. But there's rules in this colony. For the best spot, the biggest always wins. Every spring, snowy owls fly north, back up to their northern tundra home. But this snowy owl has just made a kill. A red-throated loon. This is seldom seen. It's more of a delicacy for him. Back on his northern tundra home, he will mostly eat small lemmings. But he would never waste an opportunity to eat. So to go from lemming to waterfowl, he doesn't seem to hesitate. He may enjoy himself. He will need all the energy he can get for his long trip back north. Now that winter has turned to spring for him, and the urge to mate is great. Unlike the snowy owl or the seals, who function normally around people, on the shores of Massachusetts, there is a little bird facing a huge problem. It's a piping plover. It stands only an inch off the ground and is only slightly longer than a Coke can. It isn't a very big bird and people don't even notice its presence. Mm -hmm. 
some of the biggest issues it faces are human development, habitat erosion, its nests being trampled and destroyed, and of course, dogs at the beach. These are only a few threats this bird needs to handle each and every year. Unfortunately, they haven't adapted like the owl or other species, and their numbers are in decline. They are a threatened species, and could be lost if more effort isn't taken. They breed and make their nests in dunes and beach grass. But beach traffic has steadily increased, and their nests are in danger of being trampled. The future is uncertain for this species. They could become another species lost on an ever-growing list. Slightly inland where the river meets the sea, the estuary marsh. It's home to many species, but out of all of them, there's one species that is a common sight to see. The greater yellow legs. And it just so happens for these ones here, it's feeding time. The greater yellow leg's long legs allow it to run in the deep marsh pools effortlessly. And when it sees its prey, it dives its beak below the surface and runs, plunging towards it. But the feeding on the fish does not last long, however. It's not their only source of food. The small pools of fish don't just feed the yellow legs, but most of the bird species found in the marsh. Every day the tide comes in covering the marsh and the water channels up with water, carrying in with it fish who spawn in the pools that form when the tide go out and they're stuck, only having the grass as protection. It's these pools that sustain life on the marsh.
The rest of their diet consists of spending time feeding along the marsh for small tidbits. But it comes at a cost. There's no real shelter on the marsh. While some grass can grow high enough to offer coverage, their food is in the open. They are very exposed, and not the only ones out there, so they constantly remain on guard. You never know who's lurking around. But once a threat is spotted, the warning call is released. Now all others know to be alert. A move is made, and the yellow legs is off. Finally inland, we have reached thick, lush forests that give way to a hidden waterfall. The water will travel down and stop along its way out to the ocean. It'll form small swamps, given help by beavers. It's home to many creatures, many of whom traveled north for the winter, who have hibernated under the thick, warm leaf beds. For a species in particular, it's breeding season. In the thick, brushed floor is a perfect spot for a little privacy. They're northern water snakes, and they seem to have gotten started. But not all things are this easy in nature. Given time is short, the male must use every moment he can get. But there's an issue. He's not alone. Another male has found them. He will try to work his way in if he wants to meet this female. But a commotion in the brush can bring a lot of unwanted attention. Fortunately enough, it settled down quickly, but at what cost? In all the commotion they made, they were spotted. It's best to move slowly through this thick underbrush. The hawk, however, can't penetrate the thick brush of the forest. He'll have to wait for a better opportunity. But the female, unaware of the danger, keeps moving forward. The female, still unaware of the danger, has had enough of the males and decides to try to run away.
In the confusion, one of the males tries to follow, but ends up following in the wrong direction. While the other, confused, heads the opposite way. He must test his luck somewhere else. He'll have to move fast, however. In the water, he is too exposed and an easy target. But when he feels danger is present, he freezes right where he is. He must hold dead still. It's his best chance of not being spotted. But if he is, he still has one more trick, a defense he can do. Within seconds, he can slip underneath the water and be gone. He can hold his breath and reappear somewhere else. Maybe he will find some luck and locate another mate somewhere else before summertime runs out and his chance to breathe has been missed. And just like that, that warm New England summer that brought about species to breathe will now head south as it'll turn into a colorful fall and the exchange will happen fast all throughout the Northeast. Green leaves will change color and fall off. Summer birds will start its migration south to the warmer climates. Reptiles and amphibians will find their place to hibernate. Mammals brave enough and tough enough to stand the trials to come without hibernating will brace themselves. For northern clouds will come moving in and snow will sweep over and blanket the landscape, changing it for a short time till spring arrives once again and the cycle starts once more. In the end, however, they will have to face their biggest obstacle, mankind. It's not animals who need to learn to live around humans, but it's humans who need to learn how to live alongside them. Just because some are protected doesn't mean that they are safe from us. If we continue our ways with dismantling environmental regulations, we may not see species like this or even more the habitat they live in the same for too much longer. For the future is in our hands. It is up to all of us to make a difference. And you can help by doing this most simplest of things because they make the biggest of changes. Thank you.